In the last video, we looked at a few examples of artificial or constructed languages. We looked at Wilkins' philosophical language and at Esperanto and the reasons why people made them. Here, we're going to look at a few more examples of artificial languages. Indeed, as we mentioned, there's many reasons why people make these. It, it's an art. They make it because they might be looking for a way to turn language into mathematical functions or to find universality, a way to speak that is common to all humans, which um, might not be a successful search, but people have tried, as we saw in Wilkins' philosophical language. People have built languages because they have some ideal or some belief that they want to put into a language. For example, pacifism for Esperanto. People design languages because they want to other characters in literature. They want to make them different from, for example, humans who might speak English if the piece of literature was written in the English language, which is what happened with those languages right there. In uh, Westeros and Game of Thrones, some of them speak English and some of them speak Dothraki, making them different or other. Let's look at one example. Well, we have here several examples. Uh, they're made to sound different from English, and, and we saw an example from Elvish in the previous video, which is uh, from the Tolkien books and movies. Navi from Avatar was made like this, and when um, this is Mark Gawkran, the linguist who invented Klingon, and he was asked to come up with something that sounded harsh. So he made a language with a lot of sounds that were pronounced with the back part of your throat, like ka or ha because he thought that would sound harsh. And by the way, this is also kind of like how Dothraki sounds. In world. So within the, the its fictional world, Klingon is the official language of the Klingon Empire. There's a planet word spoken, it has regional dialects within the planet, and there's different dialects of the language within other planets belonging to this empire. This is within its work of literature. In our world on planet Earth, Klingon is an artificial language that was made for the Star Trek TV series and movies. And what happened originally was that they wanted to give some Vulcan words to the character Spock. And so they hired a linguist called Mark Ockrand. He worked on languages, on indigenous languages of California, on Mutsun and on Kawiya. And those languages have structures that are not very frequent in other languages of the world. So he used some of those structures to construct Klingon. Um, he said that whenever Klingon started looking like too much like any real human language, he started switching things around. So he made things that could be spoken by a human, but that were not very frequently found in human languages. One example of this is the word order. In most human languages, the word order is like in English as subject, verb, object, like I love New York, or as in Japanese, subject, object, verb, I, New York, love. Most human languages work like this. There's a small percentage of human languages that have object, verb, subject, like the language Hishkariana from Brazil. So there you would have to say New York, love, I. And indeed, this is how you build a Klingon sentence by saying Kavin, Klut, Dev, coffee, drinks, Dave, in an order that is the mirror of what we have in English. So this is how he designed the language to make it sound like um, it could be spoken by someone with a human mouth, but it had elements that were uncommon in human languages. Also, for example, the sound tla in tlut comes from the language Nahuatl from Mexico. Something funny happened when it was being used. So the language was supposed to be used by actors, and they messed them up all the time. All the time they would mispronounce things in ways that Ockren had not designed it. So what he did was he retconned it. He took the way the recordings were and said that, oh, these actors said something different, but actually just that's just a different dialect of the language. For example, they would have to say, which is your knife, may it be sharp, but then the actor said it backwards, touch, 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 lidge. And so he said, oh, that's just from this fictional region that I'm going to make up a name, Novadut. And that's how they pronounce it there. For example, uh, in one of the movies, the actor was supposed to say, the prisoner is a human. And instead, the person really tried, but said, and so again, Ockren said, ah, that's just how they speak it on that planet. It's going to be fine. 
There are some sounds that the actress, actor couldn't pronounce, such as the ones in klut, to drink. The person said klutz. And so, again, Ogren said, oh, that's just a different dialect. So, interestingly, because Star Trek fans are so intense, and Ogren designed a full language with a full grammar, eventually people translated Shakespeare works, they've translated Hamlet, they put on presentations of Klingon Hamlet, and this is another example of a language that has uh, that has a life of its own. People, as you can see, not only dress up as Klingons, but learn it. You can learn Klingon and Duolingo, and it's an example of an artificial language created to make a fictional character and other to contrast these Klingon warriors with their harsh sounds to humans who spoke English with its non-harsh sounds. And fans have taken it and made it their own, as you can see. So this is another reason why people invent languages for art. And there's one which is just art for the sake of art. The first documented artificial language was by a, made by a nun, Hildegard of Bingen, and it was called Lingua Ignota. And we don't know very much about it. We don't know what, uh, how she designed the words, but we know she did it basically for fun because she wanted to hide some of the words that she used. So she said, oh, Orskis Ecclesia. Uh, you are the Caldemia of the wounds. You are the Crisanta in high sound. And these are words in a language that she made up just to have as her little secret code, for example. Many people just do it for the sake of it. For example, the chipmunk language that I told you about. So these are reasons why people make languages to test the possibilities of language. For example, how mathy can it get or how much classification of a world can it get. They make them to express a philosophy like Esperanto. They make it to other characters in fiction like Klingon or Dothraki. They make it for artistic purposes because they want to have fun. They want to have fun with their friends and they invent a language of their own. Some of these languages have been attached to powerful ideas or uh, fan currents. And as you can see, they have acquired a life of their own where you can find it, where you can find Klingon spoken on YouTube as well. In the next video, I'm going to tell you a little bit of how you're going to do this yourself. You are going to invent your own language.